Today we are making apple brown Betty because you asked for it. Now, to be perfectly honest, before one of you requested a small batch version of apple brown Betty, I don't think I'd ever had it. So I did a little experimenting, did a little research, and I think I've come up with a winner for you. Join me in the kitchen as we make small batch recipes with big taste. So what exactly is apple brown Betty? Well, I would describe it as a cross between apple crisp and apple pie without the pie crust. Now, the crisp layer on this does not have oats unlike regular apple crisp, but we're gonna layer apples cr uh, crisp, apples crisp, and that middle crisp layer is gonna form this delicious caramel sauce that is ooey gooey, it's gonna caramelize the apples, and it is so good. So for our apple brown betty, we're gonna use a Granny Smith apple today. Now, I like to use a tartar apple to kind of offset that real that sweetness of that ooey gooey caramel layer. You could use a honey crisp or use your favorite apple. Oh. Apple brown Betty is actually a really old recipe and it was first published in 1864 in the Yale Literary Review and the original recipe used breadcrumbs. But we're not using breadcrumbs today, we're using flour, sugar, and butter with some cinnamon. So for our apple brown Betty, we're gonna use two apples today because that's one per person. And I have peeled them, I've sliced them, and they're ready to go. Now, if you're gonna slice your apples ahead of time, here's a little trick for you. I like to put them just in a bowl of cold water with a little bit of salt, make sure they're coated with the water and they will not turn brown. Now, when you slice them, I slice them about a quarter of an inch thicker. So you just wanna get them as even as possible so that they bake evenly. So we're ready to use them. I'm gonna go ahead and drain off the water. All right. And then we're gonna take just half of a lemon and squeeze it with a lemon, little lemon juice. This just kind of brightens the flavor a little bit. Go ahead and just toss them so it gets it coated. To bake it in, we are gonna use this little baking dish. I actually got this one at Ikea. It is a five by five baking dish. If you use something a little bit bigger, your apple brown betty will just be a little thinner and won't take quite as long to cook. So use what you've got on hand. A six inch cake pan, something like that. We are just gonna lightly, I just got a little butter spray here. I'm gonna lightly spray that. Grab my toe because I missed and hit the counter. Okay, and then we're gonna make the crisp topping. And for that, I am gonna use my trusty little food processor. I think I've had this for as long as I've been married, which is a really long time, because I think it was a wedding present. But you could use whatever food processor you have or a blender. So for the crisp mixture, we're gonna use a third of a cup of just all-purpose flour, a third of a cup of granulated sugar. Now, you may be wondering, why is this called apple brown Betty? Well, I don't know who Betty is, but the brown part, from what I could tell, came from the fact that it uses brown sugar too. So we're at two tablespoons of brown sugar. We're gonna use a teaspoon of cinnamon and a eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And then last but not least, just a quarter teaspoon of salt. All right, then we're just gonna take this and we are going to just pulse it together to get all of that mixed together. And then next we're gonna add in the butter. I'm using a quarter cup of cold butter. You want cold butter, so if you use warm butter, you just can end up kind of with soup in here. So make sure your butter's cold. And you're gonna put it in a tablespoon of it at a time, and then go ahead and pulse it until that tablespoon is all incorporated. Okay, one more. Another one. And the last one. Then we're gonna pulse it until it all starts to come together and kind of resembles a little bit like clumps of wet sand. We're ready to assemble our apple brown betty. So we're gonna take approximately half of the apples that we have sliced up, get those in there, and then we're gonna take half of the crisp mixture and go ahead and just kind of crumble it over the top, getting as good a coverage as you can. It doesn't have to totally cover all the apples because it is going to melt and be Amazing. All right, get that in there. Then we'll take the other half of the apples, go ahead and put that on top. And then go ahead and take the remaining crisp mixture, crumble that right on top. All right, so we're gonna bake this in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 30 minutes. Um, you want that topping to get nice and golden brown, the apples to be nice and tender, but not mushy. And you want all those juices and caramel sauce that's gonna form to be hot and bubbly. All right, here we are. Smells amazing. A bubbly, gooey, ooey caramel layer that's in there. Now, the best thing to do is to let it sit for a few minutes, maybe five minutes or some, 
or so to let it cool down a bit. And as it cools down, that caramel sauce is gonna thicken up. It's gonna be so good. So trust me, wait a little bit on it. Now, of course, we're gonna add a scoop of ice cream. All right, it's the perfect amount for two. Hope you enjoy it. Now, if there's any other recipes you wanna see here on Small Batch Big Taste, go ahead, leave me a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video.